Ah, uh, life in the time of the coronavirus. I, uh, I've been working from home a lot, but it has given me a chance to spend a little bit of time in my garage. So I thought that I would um, give people a little bit of a, of a tour of what projects I'm working on. I haven't posted much on YouTube lately, so, uh, but I've been working on some stuff little by little, so I thought I would, um, would update everybody. So here's the turkey, the LS3, actually it's the LS2, uh, 944. Um, I just finished corner balancing it and doing an alignment on it, so I have it on my stands there so that I can access under the car, and I've, you know, set the stands up so they're perfectly level. And so yeah, the turkey's all ready to go to the track. Of course, the track isn't ready for us. Um, the, the next race for AER at, at Pitts, Pitts Race, Pittsburgh International Raceway, has been postponed. And uh, my first PCA race at Lime Rock has been postponed. And uh, the next race, which would be Watkins Glen, I do not know the status of that, but it's likely it will be postponed. So this coronavirus, of course, is impacting a lot of people in terms of health and safety and all that. Um, and, you know, we can't go, some people can't go to work. Some people have lost their jobs and, you know, it's a, it's a tough time. So being able to not race really isn't something that I should, you know, be too concerned about. Although, it, you know, it's just a, another way it impacts us. Other stuff, I haven't done that much to the turkey. We uh, did get the shocks rebuilt because they, uh, we had a blown shock, so fresh rebuilt shocks. And the other thing I've done to it is I've put in um, EGT, exhaust gas temperature sensors. You can see them there going into the, the headers on the, on the left side, and then on the, on the right side doing the same thing. So these are actually gonna go up into the, uh, into the ECU, which data logs. I don't actually have that wired up yet. I'm waiting for a component to attach them. But other than that, this car is, is ready to go, ready for the track when the track is ready for it. And what other projects? So I'm, I'm still using the, the headers that we have been using. Oh, so yes, yeah, so I mentioned that this is the LS2 engine, right? So this is a six liter LS2, um, the 6.2 liter LS3, if you recall last year blew up uh, and I, I think I showed some videos of that, but just just in case, all right? So here's the here's the cylinder heads from from that one. This is really the the the, the bore that took the brunt of the damage here. So you can see some bent valves. You can see air through the valves. You can see that some sort of debris was rattling around in that cylinder, and by some sort of debris, I mean. Uh, here's the piston. Uh, here's a piston from the other bank that was cracked. Uh, here's here's connecting rod. Yeah, yeah, that's a. Uh, there's kind of like the rest of connecting rod and piston. I guess you could go with a magnet, and anything that the magnet picks up is connecting rod. All right, I beam of the connecting rod there, and anything that's you know aluminum. Is, uh, is piston, right? Here's a chunk of piston that has the the, uh, the curve for the wrist pin and the little groove for the snap ring. This wrist pin got beat up pretty bad. You can see some, even a notch out of the end there. And uh, what else? Here's a connecting rod that got pretty beat up, but didn't fail. But it uh, definitely isn't looking so good. Uh, interestingly, the the connecting rod that is whole goes with the broken piston and the connecting rod in pieces goes with the cracked but somewhat intact piston. Uh, and let's see, this engine came to a stop so violently and suddenly. If you look at the, the cam gear, I don't know if this will show, but some of the teeth are bent. Let's see here. Yeah, here's a good area. Like, like the uh, these teeth are all kind of bent in one direction because the force, uh, something got in the way of the camshaft, kind of locked the camshaft up and the crankshaft is still trying to, uh, to turn it. Um, I was unable to take the camshaft out of the block. The camshaft is bent enough that it won't slide out. So I think it was more than just a valve hitting, you know, I think a lobe hit something uh, you know, a piece of the connecting rod or a piece of the piston. So that was uh, that was a lot of damage. Pretty much uh, ate up the whole engine. You know, block heads, 
components. Uh, you know, maybe the push rods could be reused, the rockers could be reused. Um, the lifters, eh, they take oil and there was a bunch of metal debris in there, so I probably would not reuse those. So maybe some of the hardware can be reused. <clears throat> so, yeah, so now we have a, a 6 liter instead of the 6.2 liter in there. Uh, and then I was going to uh, make a set of headers for it, a better, better set of headers for it, which um, uh, this is my first attempt at making headers. It's not something that I've ever done before. Um, but I did a bunch of research and uh, you know practiced up cutting tubes and tack welding and that sort of stuff. Um, anyhow, so in the car I was able to mock up a, uh, a, a long tube set of headers here. This is equal length tubes. They're about, each primary is about 25 inches long, going into a four into one collector. This would be for the uh, the passenger side, the right side of the car. And I uh, did each primary and got it fit and it goes around the engine mounts and around the starter and I was real kind of pleased with that. I got the firing order the way I wanted, um, kind of tacked it all together, only to find that I cannot get it in the car when it's together. <laughs> I can put the primaries in individually, but not as a whole, not as an assembly. So, back to the drawing board on that. I've been using the, uh, the Ice Engine Works uh, head header modeling kit. That's these orange snap together pieces. This allows me to, with a, a combination of curve and straight pieces, um, mock together uh, a primary, make sure it fits, <clears throat> and then I can kind of measure the number of segments. And so each segment represents one, one inch of header length, right? So if I can mock it up with 25 segments from the ice kit, I know that my header primary is gonna be 25 inches long uh, when I make it out of the pipe. So a really fun process, uh, uh, it's, uh, but it's kind of back to the drawing board because again, I, I can't fit it into the car unless I take the whole engine out, which is not a reasonable thing to do every time you want to uh, take a header on or off. So right now the old headers are in there, um, but at some point uh, I will revisit uh, building my own headers for it. But what I want to do for the next project is this is the Volkswagen 1.8 turbo block that I have. It's back from the machine shop, all honed and cleaned and ready to go. And here's the head for that engine with fresh valves and valve springs and all that. And I have all the parts. I've got um, uh, the connecting rods. I've got uh, strong forged connecting rods and pistons and rings and everything to start putting this engine back together. So that's what I'm hoping to do in the next few weeks of the coronavirus is put that 1.8 turbo engine together. So there you have it. That's what's going on in the, in the hack racing world headquarters here in, uh, in upstate New York. So I hope everyone stays safe, stays healthy. Wash your hands. Wash your hands like you have grease on them many times a day. Uh, I have grease on my hands, so I wash them for that reason as well as preventing any spread of the virus. Take care. Be safe.